legendary barber Mark McIver cuts the hair of Anthony Joshua, LeBron James and Stormzy, but how did he secure these A-list clients? And what are they like in person? I popped into his East London store to find out and even got a trim from the man himself. All right, Mark, I'm Alex. How Good you doing, see you, man? Good. Thanks for having me today. No worries, man. People will be walking past and wondering why the queue is so big today. So, um, why is it like that? Sada Cuts and Coca Cola have you know, done a collaboration where they have taken over the barbershop and basically, you could say, rented it for the day but with us still in it. <laughs> because with the launch of the FIFA World Cup, they are just saying that they want to do this. They've got this kind of pledge where it's like, share your promise. So it's all about sharing a promise. Like if your team wins the World Cup, I promise to do this, I promise to do that. And they were just like, you know, in launching this, what better space to do it in a barbershop? Because as you can see, it's super busy. So all the customers which are coming in were like, you know, what's your promise? Which I'm going to ask you as well. You know, <laughs> what's your promise? Because I think yeah. also it's good yeah. when you put your promise out and you say it out loud, it almost feels like something you have to more so stick to. It's an accountability, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you're telling me whatever your promise is, I might see you again and say, you know, oh, you know, let's say England won the World Cup. Did you keep your promise? I'm not sure about that, mate. <laughs> so I, I, I'm going to be back in Wales, obviously. Okay, yes, yes. And yes. We're, we're in the group, same group with England. Um, I can't promise that Wales are going to win the World Cup. Yeah. But if Wales beat England in the group stage, I will get I Love Gareth Bale tattooed on me. Wow. <laughs> that is... Um is that a bold enough that, that's, promise? That's, that's very bold. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a little bit too bold. Uh, right, a yeah. real tattoo, permanent tattoo. Or a henna tattoo. I, I, okay, the, the small print we'll worry about later. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a medium fade uh, in 0 0.5 on the back and side? Yep, yep, yeah. yep. A lot of people will know of you and the Slider Cuts brand through your clients like Anthony Joshua, yep. Stormzy, yep. Um, is it Tiny Temper as well? Yeah, I, don't, yeah, I was cutting him for you. Like Reggie Yates and people like that. Yeah, so I like this morning. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, like some of the some of the UK's most famous people. Yeah. Um, how did you get to the level where you've got those people as regular clients? Uh, do you know what? I think it was just me focusing on my craft of being a good barber. Like I never, people always ask me that question and they always say, you know, are you part of some agency? Like, you know, they always think, you know, you must be getting these clients from somewhere. And I'm like, no, literally I um, just worked on my craft being a good barber. And then initially it was word of mouth. So before social media, which a lot of the younger audience won't remember a time when there was no social media. <laughs> but before social media, you know, a lot of barbers relied on word of mouth. You know, probably like when you were younger, you went to a barber shop because it's either in your area or someone said to you, check out this barber. Yeah. So first of all, I just started like that. I was just cutting hair and I had a good reputation among people, right? And then when social media came out, now I was able to put my skills out there as well. So now it, there were still recommendations, but also now people might recommend you, but now someone can see your work. Yeah. Or for some reason, they just come across your page because on the explore page, you keep coming up. You know, um, and that's how I got some of these clients, like like Anthony Joshua. He saw me on Instagram. Is that how it came about? Yeah, he saw me on Instagram. Wow. So he was just watching. This is like 2014, 2013, 2014. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just watching my page. He never followed me, but he was just watching the page, watching what I was doing. So I looking know, on your page. Looking at it, then eventually he contacted <laughs> yeah. me for a haircut. Same thing with Tiny Temper. Yeah. He came across my page. Reggie Yates. He came across my page as well. Um, but then there's other ways where it's like. Let's say, as an example, LeBron James. Like, wow. he came because I literally cut someone's random person's hair in the shop one day. Like, you just walking in, I cut his hair. That was it. I cut his hair, he liked the haircut. A year later, he came back. Tall, dark skinned guy. Came back with a deep voice, American deep voice. Came back, this time he was waiting for me because last time he came here, he liked the haircut I gave him and the service he got. So, I cut his hair, but now I'm talking to him, asking him, you know. You know, what are you doing over here? I can hear the accent. And he said, oh, I'm a basketball player. I play in the NBA. But I'm originally from London. So every year I come back to see my family. You know, so then I was cutting him every year on his break. Then when the Olympics came over, he plays in the NBA. He's like, yeah, come see my barber. 
nothing to do with social media. That was just me literally just cutting your hair and doing a good job, even though I didn't know who you were. So that's why I say, ultimately, wow. the way I got a lot of these people was just actually doing my job correctly. You know, whether people were, or whether I thought people were watching or not. And then you just find that, would you collect, when you start throwing those good seeds around, they just grow in places you don't know. You've been cutting AJ's hair for eight years. Yeah. No, Andy Joshua's yeah. hair. Yeah. Um, does he always come into the shop or do you, or do you act mobile as well? Or? There's a bit of both. So sometimes yeah. he comes to the shop, sometimes I go to his house, sometimes I go to, on, might be on set, wherever he's at. Yeah. So there's a bit of both. It just really depends on what he's doing and where he's at and what's happening um, for him. Like, it's funny, when I cut, like, let's say, like, newer, let's say, like, Andrew Joshua, like, newer, kind of, like, celebrity to some degree. Yeah. Because, you know, when I, you know, when he blew up, I was an adult. But I'm more blown away sometimes when there are people who I remember as a kid watching and thinking, you know, there was no connection between us. I would never meet you in life. So I remember, like, I, I cut Nelly, you know, Nelly the rapper? Yeah. American. Jeez. I remember I cut him. Yeah. And I remember that was kind of like, I was cutting his hair thinking, so, I remember being in secondary school and people were arguing over, oh, this song by Nelly or that, and whatever it was. Nelly like, and, and Kelly and all that. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah, just all this stuff. Right? Yeah. I remember being in secondary school yeah. and it's like, rah, you're in my chair right now and I'm looking at you and, you're t and I'm like, what haircut do you want? And you're saying to me, oh, I saw this haircut on your Instagram and I was like, rah, you were on my Instagram. <laughs> and, I, and those are the type of things that I find kind of like, not weird, but like, oh, wow, because yeah. it's like, when I was that kid in school and we were in the playground, we were arguing whatever we were arguing about. I never thought in any way that I would ever meet you, let alone be cutting your hair. I bet to him as well, he thinks he's just asking for a haircut and you're like, mm. wait, you don't know that I used to talk about you in the playground and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah there's just things like that. That's why I said, yeah. it's always weirder for me when it's like, it's people who you saw on TV from when you were young. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, right, this is a, like, how, how, how am I here? Do you think people, underestimate how powerful word of mouth can still be in terms of growing a business? So word of mouth I think is still plays a massive part in promotion because that's a lot of time where the real reputation comes from. Yeah. Because you know you can have a big following on Instagram but if everyone in this area thinks that you're rubbish then they run around saying that you're rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, you know, and then that will spill over into social media and online. So I think you know your reputation is a massive part of your success in your business. So it's not about just trying to be switched on, doing the right things when you think the right people are watching, but it's actually just about being that right type of business and doing the right things full stop. Yeah. And that way you cover all grounds, whether it's social media and word of mouth and all of that stuff there. So that's why I think, you know, with me, that's what happened. Because even like, as I said, some of the names we mentioned, they were following me and they weren't following me though. They weren't, I didn't know, I didn't see their names following me, but they were watching my page for ages thinking, okay, we like this guy, so they're, they're, they're studying me, they're interviewing me without me even knowing it. Yeah, yeah. And I've always said, those people came to me, what about all those people that watched my page and didn't come to me because they didn't like me or like my attitude or like their haircuts, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, you're always in an interview, basically. So they were looking at like a portfolio, basically, on social media, weren't they? Like, yeah. I think like a CV online. Yeah, but also re yeah. Re reputation, as I said. I remember, I'll give you another name, like J, um, J. Cole. Just a quick story. I cut him because one day my sister-in-law had a friend and she was giving him a gift and said well would you cut his hair for me as a gift and i said cool no problem she goes i'll pay for it which i always point out she never paid me for it <laughs> but that's what family do um, <laughs> i cut his hair that was it spoke a little bit all good he came back about six months later for a haircut again now off his own back i cut his hair all good a few months later he called me randomly because i'm with j cole right now he needs a haircut I don't know who this guy is, I don't know anything about him. He's like, I'm with J. Cole. You know, he, he can't get through to his barber, um, which he normally uses. Can you come cut his hair? I said, cool. And that's why I always try to explain to people, it's more than just, oh, are you looking good online? <laughs> you know, it's all those basic interactions you have with the people you don't think are anybody, because everybody's someone, you know, and everybody that steps into your chair should be treated with the respect that you give anyone that's in your chair. And if you act that way, then you won't ever feel like, oh, I missed out on this opportunity or I missed out on that because you're just being the right person all the time. You know, so yeah, so there's loads of stories where it's like, oh, I got this from social media, but I got this from just recommendation and word of mouth, you know. So that's why I just feel like, you know, when it comes to my business, it was just like me just covering all bases and just saying, okay, how should I be acting? What level of service should I be giving? What haircut should I be giving out? And just trying to give that to everyone. When I came in, I, I shared my World Cup prediction and promise yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was Wales to beat England in the 
in the group stages. Um, have you thought about what your World Cup promise is? Yes, I actually have two. All right, so hit me with them. <laughs> if England yeah. win the World Cup, number one. That's a big if. First, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if they win the World yeah. Cup, I am going to buy 50 footballs and I'm going to give them out to any children that can't afford a football. You know, because I just feel like football is the easiest game to play because, you know, I just feel like get two bags, you've got a goal. Get goal your post for goal posts, it? That's you know, you like, yeah. so I just feel like, you know, kids and children, just having a football can occupy, is a healthy way of occupying, you know, young people's lives. You know, so, you know, like when you're bored, give them a football. They'll kick it about. They'll play remember, Wembley. They'll play whatever, yeah. you know, World Cup, you know, by themselves. So I'm like, I'm going to buy 50 footballs and I'm going to give them out to children who can't afford it. And then the second one is, if England win the World Cup, is I'm going to do a day or half a day of free haircuts for children only, though. <laughs> for children only. And that's in bold and underlined that. Yeah, bit, children under, under 16, I'm yeah. going to do it. That's really, I mean, they're much more noble uh, <laughs> promises to keep than the, the stupid one I had. <laughs> uh, but it does rest on England winning the World Cup. I take it you've still got a few footballers. Um, as regular clients now? No, I don't genuinely do. It's weird, my clientele is more based, I think, in entertainment. Right. You know, um, I used to cut more football players. The reason why I don't cut football players is because, um, to be very honest, I, I, I think the workload is too much. I don't, because I like being here as well and working here, when you cut football players, it's never one football player, it's always them and their friends one. And yeah. when you're cutting, if I'm cutting you and you move teams, now it means that I'm travelling to Swansea, <laughs> as example. It was good Swansea, isn't it? You know, I'm <laughs> saying, you know, you might yeah, move yeah. teams and then... I know what you mean. So I remember years ago being like, I wanted, did, I wanted to move away from that and I didn't want that because I just wanted to be kind of like rooted around here and not be yeah. up and down everywhere. And, and the demand of how often they want their haircuts, I just like... It's just a bit much. Was that a difficult decision? Because I'm guessing you could have probably made more money by doing like say an entire football team's hair rather than like one singer is that yeah. accurate or yes but so i never made a decision to be like oh i'm i'm searching for football players or i'm searching for singers or presenters but i made more of a decision to pull away from football players should i say because when the, when the little I was doing back then, it was just kind of like on the roads all the time and it was like here, there. And when I knew I wanted to start a family and I wanted to have a family life, I just knew that this doesn't uh, help, you know, that yeah. family life. Like I know one um, barber and he cuts loads of football players and he's always on the road cutting football players. And I, and I see him and I'm like, how do you do this? And I remember him talking about his wife saying, look, his wife is the most supportive woman in the world. Like, you know, she just leaves him, lets him do what he's doing. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know how you, you do it. She must be very supportive because you're always on the roads, right? But yeah. I knew I didn't want that, so that's why I kind of pulled away from it. That's fresh, man. Yeah, one of the best haircuts I've had in a while. That, yeah, all good, man. Thank you.